Hi guys, Mr. Glasby here. Today we're looking at Peter Shineski's poem, Ten Mary Street. And this poem is all about the house where he grew up or spent most of his early parts of his life in Australia. Now, obviously, the title of the poem is what we're going to start with, and the title is Ten Mary Street. So that is the title. And if we look at the uh, Peter Shineski bio handout that I gave you, that bio says uh, that that was one of the places they went after they left the migrant hostel and they settled there for 19 years and we we know this from the poem because both that starting line for 19 years and later on in the poem they say for 19 years so that repetition of 19 years that links to Peter Shineski's experience because for 19 years that's where he lived that's a personal experience that he went through uh, and that's a personal Peter Shineski experience for 19 years we departed each morning, shut the house like a well-oiled lock. Now that there, that like a well-oiled lock, uh, obviously it's a simile, but it's important to note that <coughs> a well-oiled lock just works and it keeps things inside the house. So even though it's a simile, it could be seen as a, a bigger image, a, a bigger metaphor for all the things they're keeping inside that house, which could be the memories of their culture, it could be memories of where they came from, uh, what happened in, in Poland. So the quote there is like a well-oiled lock. The technique is a simile, and the effect of that simile is that it gives us the idea that when they shut the house and shut the lock, they put a, a, a stop to something. The link to Peter Shineski's experience, what you'd put in that column, is the idea that uh, they were hiding their culture almost or, or locking it away where people couldn't get to it. Uh, in the comment on the migrant experience, well, you could argue that every other migrant was doing this, that they were shutting the door on their culture. And in the link to rubric, we're actually talking here, um, the sentence where it says that they are talking about um, the perceptions and ideas of the migrant. Um, this like a well-oiled lock, I also want to say, is really important because we know throughout this poem that the Shineski family did practice their culture. And I'm going to jump a little bit to here where it says, kept pre-war Europe alive with photographs and letters heated with discussion and embracing gestures. Visitors that ate <coughs> kielbasa, salt herrings and rye bread, drank raw vodka or cherry brandy. That there shows very clearly that inside the house they're still practicing their culture. They're still practicing the Polish, uh, eating Polish cuisine. They're still drinking Polish drinks. So we know for a fact that when they shut the door on their house like a well-oiled lock, that they were shutting their culture out in order to, I suppose, fit in with their new culture. Hid the key under a rusty bucket to school and work over that still too narrow bridge around the factory that was always burning down. Back at 5 p.m. from the polite humdrum of washing clothes and laying sewerage pipes. Uh, this here links really well to the migrant experience because, um, as we found out in that context PowerPoint, that when the migrants settled here, regardless of what their jobs were back in Poland or back in the country of origin, they didn't, um, they weren't necessarily given those jobs. So they could have been a doctor and they were being forced to uh, be domestics if you're a female or labour if you're a male. And that was sort of one of the prices that they had to pay uh, in order to become migrants to this, to this country. So the quote there is of washing clothes and laying sewage pipes. The technique, um, well, the technique is just descriptive. It's just a descriptive imagery. <coughs> then you have uh, linked to Peter Shineski's experience. Well, his parents um, obviously washed clothes, was domestic, and laid sewage pipes. That was his, his father's occupation. Mm -hmm. Linked to the migrant experience, and the comment on the migrant experience is that these are the jobs that migrants did without really thinking. And uh, well, they were, they were meant, made to do that by the government. And then the link to the rubric is that the, it's the attitudes of the Australian government towards migrants because what we're looking at here 
is really, um, well, we're, we're looking at how the migrants are treated when they got here, regardless of what skills they had. They were put into these very specific jobs of being labourers for males, domestics for females. Moving on. My parents watered plants, grew potatoes and rows of sweet corn, tended roses and camellias like adopted children. Home from school earlier, I'd ravaged the backyard garden like a hungry bird. Now, like a hungry bird, the technique there is obviously simile, <coughs> but um, really the technique is, is the reoccurring motif. And the reoccurring motif of this is that... Um, Throughout all of his poems, um, throughout all of his poems, Shinesky talks about the bird and the idea of the migrant being a bird. So it's a reoccurring motif, and I spelt that wrong, but that's okay. Um, and he talks about the bird, and in different poems, he actually describes how that bird is being treated. So in Migrant Hostel, as you'll see in another video. In Migrant Hostel, he's talking about how the bird is struggling to get its bearings. In this one, he's saying, like a hungry bird, um, he's ravaging the back garden. <coughs> so he's actually saying he's a young bird, a uh, small bird, um, he's free to fly around, um, but he's filling himself. So this motif of the bird being a symbol for the migrant experience. So in technique, we have reoccurring motif, What's the effect of it? Well, the effect is that the bird is a symbol for freedom and that he keeps tying that experience to freedom. Linked to Peter Shinesky's experience, well, he's saying that he was, um, he was young. He was a small bird um, who was free but never really flew far from the home. Um, uh, in the comment of the migrant experience, well, he's, the reoccurring motif of the bird shows that he thinks that the birds were caged or stopped from having their freedom. And the link to the rubric is the experience of the migrants in Australia. <coughs> that should be my. Okay, let's go to the next one. The house stands in its china blue coat. Now I highlighted china blue coat. Uh, in its china blue coat, the technique of that quote in the technique column is the fact um, that the technique is, um, it's, it's descriptive language, it's the use of adjectives, and it's a very carefully chosen adjective because China blue uh, is a direct link to migrants, the Chinese migrants who came years before the Polish uh, and the Yugoslavian. Um, so the, the technique is that it's an adjective. The effect of that is that it's linking to a much bigger idea, uh, and that is of um, the migrant experience in Australia. Peter Shinesky's experience, well, that was the colour of his house. He is actually describing the colour of his house. Then in the link, the comment on migrant experience, what he's saying here is that... Um, He's actually saying that the migrant experience has been going on for a very long time by making reference to this, um, to, to these migrants. Um, and the link to the rubric is the attitude of the Australian government towards people. He's actually having a, a bit of a crack at the people and saying, you know, well, <coughs> you let all of these people in um, and you're letting us in. And we're very thankful, but look at all the stuff we're giving back to you. So here's this China blue paint. Uh, you wouldn't have the idea of China blue paint if it wasn't for Chinese migrants. So he's saying that, yes, migrants are giving a lot to it. Um, and I know that some of you are going to argue with me and say, well, that's just the colour of his house. And yet yeah, it is just the colour of his house, but it's a very carefully chosen word. You have to realise that in poetry, you choose your words very, very carefully. So let's keep going with this. With paint guaranteed for another 10 years, lawns grow across dug up beds of spinach, carriage and carrots and tomato. The whole block has been gazetted for industry. For 19 years, we lived together. There's that 19 years again. We lived together, kept pre-war Europe alive. 
with photographs and letters heated with discussion and, and embracing gestures. Visitors that ate kielbasa, salt herrings and rye bread drank raw vodka or cherry brandy. That, all that bit there where I've highlighted that in the, in the black, that's all very important stuff. And it's all very important stuff because what he's doing is he's listing all of the cultural things. Um, but he's also touching on the reason why the migrants came to Australia, kept pre-war Europe alive. Well, if they liked it before pre-war, if it hadn't been for the war, they wouldn't have moved. That's sort of what he's saying. So in the quote, you write that, all that's in red at the moment. In the technique, you would put down how it's um, talking about <laughs> the effect of it is essentially, well, the technique is listing, these listing a lot of things, um, and the effect of that is that it gives us a good picture of all the things that were going on in Peter Shinesky's life. Um, in the Peter Shinesky's experience column, you would then very much talk about how um, uh, how it's his experience of what happened in his house, so all the cultural stuff that he was introduced to, all of the cultural stuff his friends possibly were um, introduced to. In the comment on the migrant experience, what he's there talking about is the fact that they all had a common cause for coming over in that post-World War II uh, time frame. They all had a very common cause, and that was the fact that the war, the war caused these things, the, these migrants to come to Australia. And that all of these migrants were, in some way, they had a list of their own. They all had photographs. They all had letters. Um, <coughs> the kielbasa, is, which is a type of sausage, the salt herrings, um, which is a dried salted fish, rye bread, uh, raw vodka, cherry brandy. These are all things that are very much tied to the Polish. And so what he's saying with the migrant experience is that each migrant has their own list. They have their own list of things. And when we link that to the rubric, we're actually linking to the, to the statement that said uh, the idea of, um, especially in terms of post-World War II migrants, so perceptions and ideas towards migrants, especially post-World War II migrants. <coughs> All right. And the last quote that I think is really quite interesting, probably there's another two quotes, um, is naturalised more than a decade ago. We became citizens of the soil that was feeding us. Really big thing. Technique there. Technique is a metaphor. And it's a very strong metaphor. Um, the effect of it is the fact that he's giving us the idea of who they think they belong to. Okay, so Peter Shinesky is giving us a good, by using this metaphor, he's giving us an idea of who the migrants belong to. In Peter Shinesky's experience, he's saying, well, their family, or even though they were naturalised, and to be naturalised means you were starting the Australian Citizen Program and you were starting to become a citizen, even though you were naturalised, they didn't feel part of that culture. They didn't feel a part of Australia. They felt segregated. And in fact, even though they were on their way to becoming citizens, um, they were actually... Um, I, I suppose they were actually more thankful to the, to the soil that gave them stuff. So... That's Peter Shinesky's, is that his family was really, even though they were citizens, they were more citizens of the soil, even though they became citizens of Australia ages ago. Uh, linked to migrant experience is that a lot of other migrants felt the same way. They felt segregated. They felt um, pushed to the side. Even though they'd been assimilated into the culture, even though they were welcomed into Australia, they weren't really, they were sort of sec separated. They were segregated. <coughs> linked to the rubric is, of course, the, um, the migrant experience, the experience of the migrant people um, due to the fact that the government and the Australian people treated them that way. And that last quote here, which is inheritors of a key that open no house when this one is pulled down. This is a really, really big quote. And to unpack it, we really need to examine what, what's happening here. So inheritors of a key that'll open no house when this one is pulled down. So they inherited a key to what? The house, yeah? 
that'll open no house. So the key will open no house when this one is pulled down. So what he's essentially saying is they were inheritors of a key. And remember, if we think of the house as the place where all their culture goes, and they inherited their culture, they inherited their Polish ancestry, but, and this is only my interpretation, you can argue me till you're blue in the face, awesome, I, I, I want to have these arguments, I want to have these discussions. But in my interpretation of it, Shineski is saying that they inherited their culture. They inherited who they were. They inherited their ancestry. But once the house in Mary Street is torn down, and once the family unit is gone, I think what he's saying is, well, we won't be able to get that culture back. That culture will be gone. We'll be part of the Australian culture. We'll, <coughs> we'll be assimilated into the into the um, into Australia. So in the quote, you put the inheritors of a key that'll open no house when this one's pulled down. In the technique, you put metaphor. Uh, even You could even talk about extended metaphor of the house, and the effect is that the house becomes a symbol for the Shineski family. In the Peter Shineski's experience, he's actually sort of retrospecting. He's looking back at it, and he's going, well, once that, that house, once that family's gone, our culture may actually die off with them. It may actually stop there. It may not go any further. So in Peter Shineski's, you're writing that. You're writing the fact that he feels like their culture will go um, once his, his family is torn apart, um, whether it be by death or age or whatever. Uh, in the migrant experience, you're probably saying that, um, same thing, that he's being, Peter, Peter's saying that the migrant experience in general is actually impacted upon by the fact that these families are going and they're being separated um, and that their culture will get separated and dispersed or it will stay together. And in the link to the migrant experience rubric, in that column, last column, you're putting there very simply that, well, he feels um, that it's the link to the migrant perceptions and ideas. Okay, so that's 10 Mary Street. Um, hope, hope it's been a little bit helpful, but you can see how throughout this poem, Chinesky's actually really um, not criticizing the Australian government, but he's saying, this is where I grew up, this is how I grew up, and this is why, because of the way I grew up, and this is the house that we grew up in was such a symbol for who we are as people, um, that when it's torn down, phew, our culture's gonna go. Okay, any questions, come and see me, uh, but hopefully you got a little bit out of that. Thanks.